Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to respond to questions and comments that I received after showing you my Robax palette the other day. Um, first thing I wanted to show you though was that I reordered my colors so that they were fitting across from their complementaries a little bit better. I have my oranges here. I moved a lot of my browns out. I moved some browns here and my yellow ochre and gothite brown ochre over toward my yellows because they're yellower colors. And I left my orangey browns by my oranges or my warm reds. So they're across from my blues now, as good as I can get them. These are turquoise green blues. Um, and then I've got my cooler reds facing more of my greens. And then I have my yellows here with the yellow ochre and gothite brown ochre across from my violets. And then uh, my blues again across from the oranges. So then up here I have three extra brown colors that I needed a place for and my grays and black. Uh, that I have up here also. And then I was gifted three colors a few years ago by Mojo Designs. She gifted me these three colors, Fuchsite, Genuine, Quinacridone, Lilac, and uh, Graphite Gray. And I love all three colors. They're very pretty. This, green, this Fuchsite is a little greener than my um, Iridescent Turquoise and my Cobalt Teal, which is good, so it's different. My Graphite Gray, I probably would not buy that because I have other grays that I like better. Now, somebody else had asked me also um, about the colors that are in my palette, and she wanted to know all the colors I have. I thought, oh my gosh. She was, she was kind of bummed that I didn't fill my pans on camera and do it that way. But I'll tell you what, it took me four to five hours to do all of this. And today I found another one, my orange, that had fallen out and ended up in my Rascog cart. So I had to put that in today. My Burnt Sienna wasn't labeled, so I had to figure out what color that was, which luckily was not hard. And so it would have been way too long to be doing on camera. I couldn't have done that to you guys. Nobody would watch that. My video would have been several hours long, even in hyperlapse. So anyway, I'll go over all the colors, but... If I was also stating that I didn't want the 185 palette, or no, 185? 85, I'm sorry, 85 um, pan palette, which is 15 inches. It would come in about here rather than the 18 inches mine is in order to accommodate the size of the wells. But the wells are 85 of this size which I thought were going to be too small because back in the day before Rob from Robax had designed the inserts for the wells, you just had the empty wells, like there's no pans yet for these. But people would get their half pans and they would stick half pans in the holes, leaving this little gap here. Well, now looking at this, I could have taken a mop brush and filled that. But it still would have rubbed, I think, a little bit. I'm a little bit careless when it comes to that. So I like a big pan. And when you look at this, I can get a mop in here, no problem. I mean, that's very easy to fit in and, and get color from. So you get an idea of how big this actually is. In fact, I could probably use some of my longer, longer brushes, even something like this, although I probably wouldn't. I could get that down in there, too, if I wanted to. In fact, I just got paint on it. Um, but I would probably pull it out and use it on a mixing tray. And what I would do with this, somebody said, oh, that's so big. But one of the reasons I got this big size was for the pans. But I'm going to set it over here, along here. And once I have the frame built, it's going to only cover my table by about three inches. Whereas my old palette, this black one would not fit on the side very well and it was too low and seemed too far away from me so I always set it right here and then I lost all this space over here for working so that's why I've decided to go with this and it's going to work out just fine for me it may be too huge for you especially if you're working like some people said at a kitchen table where they have to pack up and move things and this is just too big for them I get it so it's not for you but they have some that are very 
very small. This size, you can get a small carousel for them for like 12, 24, even 44 colors or 41 colors, I forget what it is, that go around the outside. And had I known how big these were, I may have done that. If I end up with filling up all of these things and I go over that, I'll just order a different insert for this and pull this one out. But another thing people like to do is to have a small tray that is empty so that when they're painting, they can take their paints out of their wells that they're using and take them out and set them into their slots on this and just use something like this to paint from. For me, I think the best bet for me will be to just mix my paints on a porcelain palette, like my footprint palette here, mix my paints and keep that on my table, and then just keep this off to the side so that I can grab more color if I need it, but I'll have my puddles of color already on my palette. Now they make another one that's 24 that has sloped palette, so you can make puddles right in your palette, which is really nice. I wish the 64 did that, and maybe one day he will, and then I'll switch over to that. But as it stands right now, I can make pu puddles right on my um, my uh, porcelain trays and be fine. So I'm going to really quickly run through these colors that people wanted me to tell them about, and I'm just going to name them all off. If they are not Daniel Smith, I will tell you what they are. Otherwise, these are all Daniel Smith, okay? This one is Permanent Alizarin Crimson. Permanent is different than regular Alizarin Crimson, so be careful. Uh, you want the permanent one. The uh, the regular alizarin, alizarin crimson is fugitive, which means it will fade. Then I have rhodite genuine, quinacridone magenta. The ones that say genuine are from the Primatech line. This is opera pink. This one is also fugitive. Do not buy it. I did not buy it. I received it in a doodle and sketch box. This one is by Shinhan PWC. I also have it in my Mission Gold colors, <clears throat> and I don't use it because it's fugitive. Quinacridone Rose, Quinacridone Coral, Permanent Rose. Now I'm getting into the warmer reds. This one is Quinacridone Red. Uh, Matter Lake Light, which is a Van Gogh color, which is a higher, higher grade than student, but not professional. Permanent Red, and if you want a good palette, that would be it. Or Da Vinci, which is professional. And I'm going to get into that in my watercolor video, which will be coming up soon. But it's way too long, and I'm having trouble editing it down. So I may have to refilm it. Uh, Anthraquinoid Scarlet. Uh, Vermilion Hue. Quinacridone Sienna. Paranone Orange, which I won't buy again. I've had that for like eight, nine years, and I don't use it much. That's the end of the tube, though, I guess. Uh, Red Ochre. Burnt Sienna, Aussie Red Gold, Transparent Red Oxide, Raw Sienna, Shadow Violet, German Greenish Raw Umber, Moon Glow, Raw Umber, Cobalt Violet, Cobalt Blue Violet, Rose of Ultramarine, Ultramarine Violet, Amethyst Genuine, Lavender, and this one is Sugalite Genuine. Then I got Sap Green, Chromium Oxide Green by Rembrandt. Another one I did not buy and I probably wouldn't buy. Uh, green Appetite Genuine, Jadeite Genuine, Undersea Green, uh, Olive Green, Rare Green Earth, Rich Green Gold, which is different than green gold, I think. Hooker's green, which I don't use, and this was one of my original Daniel Smith colors, and that's all I have left of it. Paraline green, Prussian green, ultramarine turquoise, thalo green, kyanite genuine, indigo, cobalt teal blue, indanthrone blue, cobalt blue, which is Rembrandt, ultramarine blue, Cerulean Blue, which is also Rembrandt, uh, Prussian Blue, Thalo Blue, these are very similar, um, Mayan Blue Genuine, uh, Permanent Yellow Light, Lemon Yellow, Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacridone Gold, Gothite Brown Ochre, 
permanent yellow deep yellow ochre and then up here I told you these three colors I have buff titanium which is only made by Daniel Smith it came out about a year and a half ago so maybe other companies are starting to make it now usually when they come out with a new color the others will follow suit burnt umber piemonite genuine um, hematite genuine trans Parent Oxide Brown, which is also a Rembrandt color. Then I have here Sepia, which is Mission Gold. I told you that yesterday. Joseph Z's Cool Gray, Payne's Blue Gray, Neutral Tint, and uh, Lunar Black. So I've covered all those. Now I just wanted to show you um, on here the differences in the colors. Um, I filmed this once, and I, I'll just show you these that I've put down. This is my graphite gray and my lunar black. Then I have my Payne's blue gray, my Joseph Z's cool gray, which is more lavender, and then this is neutral tint. Then I was showing here how I put neutral tint on orange and how it changed it on sap green and how it deepened that. And then this was rose of ultramarine and how it deepened that. Then um, I was showing that I probably would not buy quinacridone lilac only because I use quinacridone rose and quinacridone magenta which are very similar this is the fugitive opera pink this is quinacridone lilac no this is quinacridone rose which you could use in place of that then I got quinacridone lilac here my quinacridone magenta and um, this might be deeper quinacridone rose and then over here, this is Nicolazo Yellow versus um, Quinacridone Gold. That could be your cool and warm yellows in a palette if you didn't want to go with the basic colors here. Um, and you could also use this in place of your yellow ochre just by um, lightening the value. Although it is a little bit yellower, it's more transparent. Then these were the three colors from here. This is my Iridescent Moonstone, which is very silvery. I use it a lot for silvers. This is duo, not duochrome, uh, blah, 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 Sugaro Green, I believe is what it's called. And that's this one. And if you look at it in the light, it changes from very red to almost green color. See how that changes? It's a very cool color. I don't use it much though. <laughs> and then this is the iridescent turquoise. And then I was showing the other colors that I have that are very similar. This was, um, I think this is ultramarine turquoise. Then I had the um, genuine fuchsite, which was lighter. No, this was cobalt teal blue. This was ultramarine turquoise. This was phthalo green. Then I showed phthalo blue with sap green, giving you something very close to phthalo green. This was kyanite. This is Mayan blue, genuine, and then this is kyanite genuine, which is sparkly. But um, sometimes I'll mix them together to get a color more like Mayan blue deep. Uh, and that's basically all I wanted to tell you. Oh, this was my... Um, Sugalite Genuine, which is kind of sparkly and iridescent. I don't think it'll pick up here, though. And then against my Amethyst, Amethyst Genuine, which also sparkles, but I don't have any sparkle in this one. I think it settles in certain areas. But basically, that's all I wanted to tell you about this and show you that I've got it realigned, and I think this is the way I'll keep it. My browns have kind of overlapped here into my violets, but that's okay. Um, just kind of scooted them over. I can even put my greens over and move my violets over one step, which I think I may do. I think I might do that um, right now. And then that way they will be, my violets can be moved over. Although having them across from my yellows, that's probably why I did it that way. Ah, I'll leave it. I don't care. I know what my complementaries of each color are anyway, so um, that's fine. But anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I think that was it. Pat's going to be building me a stand, but in the meantime, I'm going to be using my black palette here on an angle so that it's more supportive for the carousel on this before I um, lose it over the edge. 
This will hold it a little bit better. And if I have it up a little bit higher, I don't want it this high, um, but for right now it'll be fine. And then that way it only overlaps onto my workspace, you know, by maybe two inches. And I've got all of this space to work on. This is a, I think this is 10 by 14 or I don't think it's 9 by 12, but you can see how much space I have now to work having that there. And I can bring my palette over, this footprint palette, and I can bring that over here, and I still have plenty of space to work in. So that'll be very nice. So in the meantime, everybody, remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care.